I am back, back in the man cave, the nerdiest cave on YouTube. And now, since I am back, I was checking on my K40 laser to see how he is doing. And sure, some screws are still missing, the high voltage power supply still makes dangerous hissing noises, and the cooling broth. Um, still looks like something you would only see and smell in a sewer. So perfect for today's project. And that is a little bit more complex. I will show you how I built this bathymetric map, including links and tweaks, how to gather the required topographic data and how to process them caveman style in Coral Draw. On a scale from 1 to 10, I would give this project an 8, as it requires some advanced knowledge of Coral Draw and Photoshop. So, as for in my case, besides a K40 unit, a bandsaw, and optionally an airbrush. A complete list of tools and materials, so as the links, um, of course, are in the description below. So, let's get started with the most complex part, creating the layout for this piece. Now, to get started, we need several things. Of course, we need a map and we need data. We need the data of the ocean depth. In the jargon, I think it's called um, bathymetric data. So it's the same thing as topographic, but it's uh, underneath the ocean surface. I found this site, uh, scribblemaps.com, that comes in pretty handy. You make a free trial account. It's, it's an awesome site. You can do awesome stuff with it. This works as uh, same as Google Maps. So you have your, your card uh, and you can zoom in. And in my case, I want to go ahead with the island of Key West down in the Florida Keys. So I zoom into that island. Now, we have the island, but we, of course, we need to remove everything that is not useful in our case. So we need to remove the street names and all of that. So down here, um, we go and click on custom. And we have this little menu that uh, shows up. So. Uh, for labelings, we don't need any labels at all, so we undo all these. In geometry, we n of course need the roads, because um, it's supposed to be a map. We will add some street names later, but we do that after we vectorized um, the whole thing. So for now, I just need the roads, um, the water, and here we have some colors, and that comes in quite handy, because when we invert this, you see that we have a nice dark contrasted map. So this will be pretty easy to cut out or to, to um, vectorize. Now, when we um, close this and we would export this, it of course gives us watermarks because in my case, I'm just running a demo or a trial version. And uh, also the real resolution isn't high enough um, because we have to vectorize all those little streets. So what I do is, what I did is uh, I zoomed in and took some screenshots. Um, for example, this one, I pressed the uh, screenshot button on my keyboard and I imported that to Photoshop or to Coral uh, Draw. And um, then I go ahead and uh, I did the next one. And then I stitched all this together, multiple uh, pictures to have a quite high resolution of this island and the street map. Now, um, when I go ahead here and I click, I go to um, Coral Draw. You see, this is the finished result. So I stitched this together out of like seven or eight different screenshots. So we have a quite nice resolution here to work with. Now we have our full resolution picture here. And um, if you have seen my videos I made about Coal Draw, how to vectorize something, um, you can check them out if you don't know what I'm doing. Quick and easy, um, you have your bitmap or your, this is in this case a, a JPEG. I click with the right mouse button on it and I go to trace bitmap. Now we can scroll around here. Um, maybe we go ahead and zoom out a little so we have more overview of what we're doing. Okay, so I think I will stick with 60 here. So I go to save the trace result. Now I go to Coral Draw. I delete this. And I open my file again. Now as it is um, vectorized, we can simply open it. We don't have to import it. Trace result map. Okay, so this is vectorized now. And what we want to do is we need to separate this now. Um, we need to separate the contours, everything we want to cut out from everything we want to engrave. So I will select the whole thing. I click with the right mouse button. I go to ungroup. So everything becomes a single layer again. And now I deselect everything. And now I start by holding down the shift key by selecting everything I want to be cut out later on. Okay, so I selected everything that is blue. Now um, we can uh, pull this over to the right just to separate this. 
So we create our cutting layer. So I select everything, I group this, I do the same thing here, I select it, right click, group. Now I go ahead um, on our translucent color, I call it, uh, click left, click right, just to be sure, and then I go ahead to black and I click with the right mouse back button and we uh, just get the outlines. Do the same thing here. As everything is grouped, we can pull these back together and we have two layers that will actually match. Next thing, we need some depth chart data or um, bathymetric data. So it was pretty hard to find a site where you can do that for free. And uh, I found one, which is a contour, contour map creator, um, a pretty awesome uh, web page, especially for what we are doing here. They ask uh, you for a little donation if you use it. I really recommend uh, helping these dudes out because um, it is pretty awesome what they do here. Now, how this um, works is uh, you zoom down to your object, you click inside of the map, just click on it with the left mouse button and it will give you this little... Uh, indicator here you do that a second time and it will draw a rectangle around the area you want that map to up, up, up here click on get data so it gets the data from this area and you see that we have our shorelines here now we can tweak a little uh, on the settings um, to get what we really want uh, in my case what i use is the custom levels let's say uh, minus one meter so everything that is below one meter will be displayed here. Now, to um, extract these data, we could go ahead and use the actual elevation data and paste it in some sort of software. But um, as I am uh, <laughs> improvising, sometimes I simply go ahead, uh, go to change resolution, go to full screen, and I zoom in like this. And now I simply grab a screenshot by pressing the screenshot button on my keyboard. In Photoshop, uh, for my uh, version here, I go to new and then image from clipboard. You can also go and add a new, you know, a new page and then paste it. As we may come in some trouble to realign everything later on, what I often do, uh, simply out of safety reasons, is I draw a little rectangle in the corner just to make alignment easier later on. And now I can go ahead with my magic wand and I can start selecting everything that is blue. You can now see that there are some spots where um, it did not work that well. Um, that's not an issue because now I click on the right mouse button and we go to grow. Grow just grows our selection a little bit and you see that now everything blue is selected. I saw when I was browsing and uh, searching for those uh, pages where you can um, get these contours from that um, different sites have different results. So when I show you here, um, this one is uh, contours axis maps. So let's try of using some data from this by just taking another screenshot and import this to Photoshop. There is our layer. I put this to the top. So, okay. And now here on the right hand side, you see opacity. I set this down and make it trans halfway translucent so we can match this to the other map we already have. Now we have all our layers together, um, including some more um, or minor details. Now we go ahead and save these. So we go back to Coral Draw and now we go ahead and import our contours here. We need to uh, vectorize these again. So same procedure, um, select one of them, click uh, right mouse button uh, trace bitmap. Okay, so we have our three layers here and uh, now we select all of them. Oops, our three layers and we move them over to our map. Next thing we need, we need the scale of the wood we're gonna use. And for me, I bought a pack of um, plywood, four or five pieces um, that are 210 by 297 millimeters. So I go ahead, um, select the rectangle tool 
and I will draw a rectangle over here and then I go ahead and um, put in the size up here of course I want to have a little uh, frame surrounding it so I will go ahead and uh, this is selected I will copy this over here you can also go to edit and copy it or you use the symbols and paste it and now let's say I want to have a two centimeter frame per side so that makes four up here and down there four so minus four is 50 and minus four over here means 170 all right now we have our frame we have our layers and we need to get our layers inside of this frame here to do that um, there is a pretty simple uh, thing to do um, just select all of the layers um, not not the frame of course and um, yeah then we go to effects power clip place inside container and we have this arrow here and now I click on that uh, container or on the frame and it puts it inside of the frame now we have to rescale this and then we go ahead we have our outside frame which is the actual wood size this is about how it looks now we can go ahead and add some little details here and there we can add some street names we can add uh, maybe the logo or the writing of Key West here and maybe a little compass in the corner <laughs> Alright, my design is finished. I added some names, some street names on the uh, most famous streets of Key West. Um, I added a little uh, Key West sign here, my compass, and now I have a whole bunch of layers that I have to pull apart to um, be able to modify this to be cut it out with the laser. Of course, you will say, why don't you um, name every each layer um, here on the right hand side in the object manager? Well, that is simply because my version of Cobble Draw 12 is buggy. So when I do that and I save the whole thing, I exit the software and I come back, um, the names will be gone. So it makes no sense for me um, to name every layer, unfortunately. Okay, I think our four layers are finished. So I will copy them over to my laptop and go over to the man cave and start cutting them out with the K40 laser. Now after the first try that uh, went out pretty bad, it really burned a lot of wood. Uh, I did the same thing a second time uh, and uh, modified uh, a little bit on the graphics. I made those little ways here, the bridges, I made them a little bit wider. Um, unfortunately I think this wood I've got um, is not ideal because um, the laser has a pretty hard time to penetrate through. So um, I had so many passes um, to be made that um, unfortunately it burned a little bit. I'm pretty sure you could use some acrylic and it will come out almost perfect. The laser seems to work best with acrylic. 
um, wood sometimes you have more fibers in it sometimes you have less all right here are my three layers and I will go ahead and uh, simply sand them off a little bit just to get rid of uh, have any burn marks And so finally I got everything together. Optionally I framed this piece of wall art. So um, now it is ready to be hung in the bathroom. Uh, so in case um, the can of room spray is too far away or your smartphone is empty, there is something you can stare at. However, I run into some issues with bugs um, in Coral Draw in this project. So before you think you made a mistake, my tip is to restart Coral Draw and make sure it's not a simple bug that drives you crazy. Of course, there are elegant ways of um, processing these topographic data instead of cutting it out with a magic wand, um, what is comparable of carving a toothpick with a chainsaw, but that's how I do things, so keep this in mind before you start hating. I hope this video was still a bit helpful and you enjoyed, and I see you on the next one. Until then, see ya.